What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a special one for you, a little bit different than normal. Today I am going to pack and load all of my tackle that I think I might need for this April, this fishing season of April, the month of April, fishing season, month, same thing. Um, and so that way it gives you a little bit of idea how I'm thinking and what the progression of the month might bring. You know, I live here in Tennessee, you know, boat ramps are closing, but there's still opportunity for access in a lot of places. Um, some of you guys aren't able to get out. Some live up north and the, and the weather's not that great. Um, but I figured I'd at least show you, this is that spawn, pre-spawn spawn, potentially post-spawn in all a month span. So I got to prepare for a lot of things changing. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the essentials. All right, first, hooks, definitely gonna need that for sure. And then this is basically all of my terminal tackle zone. So I'm gonna get in here. I just made this box. I'm gonna have, I have a Tokyo rig box right here, the little small guy. And then I just made this box. I just got some of these Bass Mafia ice boxes in. Um, I've been having some issues with these other ones breaking. So I got this one with drop shots and Nico set up. So that's sort of a cool deal. So I got my drop shots and my Nikos all set up in one box. BMC Nico hooks, got it all. So basically everything I need for drop shotting and Nico. -ing. I don't think I'm gonna need the big weight. I'm gonna bring this just because Brody might be in my boat a lot. Obviously he's gonna be in a lot, a lot. So stupid tube heads. This is just heads that, I'll talk about the stupid tube rig. I promise to you guys, I'll talk about it eventually. But uh, we've gotta add that. Definitely a Ned rig. Definitely not. Uh, Split rings. I don't necessarily think I'll need that. Cause I'm coming back home every day. Slider head box. Small hair jigs. These are like swim bait jig heads. Worm blades, like blades you put in the back of your worm. Finesse swim bait heads, yeah. Definitely gonna need him. Shaky head box. Add the shaky head box. Got grass jigs, moon eyes, big shaky heads. I don't know if I really need it. I don't think I need other spin. I mean, that's a lot of weight in the butt. I don't know if I really want to put him in there either. I'm gonna put him in there. Sw swing heads. So we got swing heads, bladed swim baits. So we got flashies, I got HD bladed swim baits. I got I got it all. So we got a combination of it all. I'm just throwing it all in there and all my HD hooks right there. And then I got original beast hooks. I got some more VMC stuff, Ran just random flashy swim bait hooks. Definitely gonna need that. Okay. Here's my worm and flipping weight box. Definitely gonna need him. Carolina rig box. I think that's gonna be it for my terminal tackle, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually hop up in the boat. I'm gonna sort of put this in the correct places first. This is what I always try to do because your terminal tackle is your the, the stuff that's the necessities of what you need for rigging your technique and setting up your techniques or setting up your rods with the right rig. So basically all this right here is where I'm gonna go to first when I'm just changing my line, swapping out you know, from a Texas rig to a shaky edge or drop shot to whatever it is. So the big thing with terminal tackle is I like to put my terminal tackle box on the outside. So I have this big strip right here in the middle. Um, so I put my terminal tackle on the outside, sorted together a little box, a little box. That's like a C rig box. I'll put my flipping weights. Here's swing head. So I'll put him real accessible. Shaky head. Nico drop shot, ready to roll. Almost like a kind of swim bay. There, heads, sticky two heads, and then tuck earrings. So that's sort of how my setup is for my terminal tackle. I want it very accessible on either side of my main boxes. So this is gonna be where bulk of my boxes go. And this is my actual Texas rig box, this is my hook box. So, so I'll put in my stuff in right real close. So I want it very easily where I can just go left or right. I know certain techniques or certain stuff is on the left. And I know my other stuff, my little bit bigger boxes are on the right, so I know which boxes those are in. So that sort of sets me up and it lets me know, hey, time is money. And when I'm in a tournament situation, I know, hey, listen, my my finesse swim bay heads are over here on the left-hand side. I just open it up, bop, grab it, done. So let's go grab a few more things. All right, so next thing I'm going to grab is soft plastics. The month of April, or when these fish are spawning, soft plastics are, is, is king. Uh, it seems like it, they start to get off of a jig and they get on soft plastics a little bit better than, than a jig. So dragon baits can be a big player this time of year. So let's just start off by grabbing a few things. Um, crack and crawls for sure. 
Here's some Googie swim baits. Bandito bugs. Five inch lunker log. French hogs. Maybe even go with a six inch lunker log. Okay, so this is the thing. I know like the, the Guggen baits come in like their own individual like clamshell packages. But for me personally, I like setting my plastics like this. Now you don't have to do it with like all one particular, like obviously I have all one particular type of plastic in this box, but I have other boxes. Let me show you, hold up. That is like my bag fishing box. This is something that's super easy to grab. And I have like a whole bunch of different things that I bed fish with bandito bugs and and like little like uh, craws and a little, some of it's white, some of it's different, some of it's like, you know, bluegill looking deal. This is the kind of stuff that allows me to really like, I feel like sometimes you buy stuff and you forget about it and you don't have it anymore. So like making little like bed fishing boxes or maybe like your favorite flipping baits. I even have like some of my favorite punching baits over here, like punch, punch box. Some of like the stuff that really goes through the, the grass a little bit better than others. So that is definitely a tip. It's helped me out. If you're, if you're a, a money bag person, you know, or, or a box person, let me know. But I've definitely felt like I stay more organized with less bags scattered all throughout my boat with these boxes right here. And that's, that's sort of what's worked for me the last couple of years. Random punch baits. I do not need those. I don't think I need a jig trick. I really don't even use that box very much. I really just throw a bandito bug. Ah, we're gonna see what got we got. Mm, I think it's gonna be important too. All right, so I'm grabbing the floating worm box. I just got some floating worms in there. Magic shads, worms, toads. Don't need them right now. I, see, it's gonna be tough because I don't think this is gonna be the deal. Big Mondo and the Mag Trick Worms. I don't think it's gonna be the deal for a little while. So I'm gonna pass on you. But when April, when Mark, when May comes along, I'm coming for you too. Don't worry, I'm coming for y'all. Okay. Oh, this is like more so chicken log and stuff. Okay. One thing I am gonna grab is some dragon drops. Dragon drops. Luke style baits. I got slim shakes. Definitely gonna have to add the slim shakes. Really? I think I'm good to go. Okay. So that's plastic, so I can just put these in here. Okay, so this is the only thing. It's turning into a time when top waters are gonna play really well. And I got like tons of top waters right here. We got frogs up here. I'm gonna say a wake bait. It's gonna be a bait that I wanna have in my boat. Underutilized technique. Definitely way underutilized. Um, definitely have a wake bait. Eh, walking baits. A little lipless. These are like old school. I used to throw that bait a lot, old school Sammy. I just don't throw it ever anymore. I feel like there's so many better options for me. Anyway, I'm not saying there won't be a ton. I'll pack the picking back up. This is a really good time to throw a cover pop. This is like definitely one of my boxes I have to throw in there for top water. I got walking baits, I got cover pops, I got wake baits. Those are, those are a good three, I feel like, boxes. I don't really think I'm gonna throw the ploppers. Okay. Now on to sort of the crankbait deal. Like I think, you know, a crankbait is going to be a player. There's, if there's fish that are still pre-spawn, this is gonna be something that I wanna have set up. So, but I think they're gonna be a little bit shallower. So um, I got a DT4 box right here and a BX Brat. So this is the box I'm gonna throw in the boat because I feel like the fish that are probably gonna be susceptible to catch them on crankbaits, at least for right now, is gonna be in that shallower four foot and less. Bring him. I'm gonna throw the wood four box right there. It's a little flat side. No, no, no. All right, so the two other boxes, I'm gonna get my flat side boxes. I got a plethora of flat sides in there, and then I'm gonna throw the shad lipless box. So I have multiple different shad sort of looking colors in for lipless. I, I'm not saying the craw the craw patterns aren't gonna be the main deal right now, but with the fish that are getting ready to spawn, they're either gonna be on bait or they're probably going to be spawning. So I think the shad, you know, blue gilly colors are gonna be better for my crankbaits, I think. So I'm thinking, I'm not saying a brown crawl. I'll say, I will say a brown crawl, random deal. Brown crawl seems like when they're like pre-spawn spawn, a brown crawl is better most of the time, depending on water color, than a red crawl. It's true, true. I'm telling you, I've seen it happen all over the country. Brown crawl crankbaits tend to catch them better. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna grab DT6s and some MDJ is setting me up with a box full of his crankbaits as well, so. I gotta throw that in there for my boy. Little plug to MG, NBJ cranks, MR6s or something, and DT6s. Big difference 
MR6 has a lot more like a kick to him. DT6 is like that real tight, wobbling like, they're both good. I'm gonna put him back here. I'm gonna put all my, my lip lids, my crank mates back here for right now, just because I don't know if that's gonna be the main deal. Okay, so I got that. I got the plastics up front and center. I might take the magic shaft back there too. Whew! I feel like we got a decent amount of stuff. All right, so now on to a couple other little things. I definitely want to pick up the Largo Shad. Largo Shad box. I only have a couple colors to really throw. I'm actually getting low on my Arkansas Glow. I either throw white or Arkansas Glow, truthfully. I don't even know what the name of this color is. But we got some stuff coming later this year. I can't wait to show you guys. Might be a few more colors out. Might, maybe, I don't know. Might be, might be, maybe. Okay, this is also the great time to throw a swim bait. Okay, swim baits, you know, you could throw multiple different kinds of swim baits. Like here's some like mag drafts. Here's some storm glides. I got a box of those. So I'm gonna definitely put those in there. Be a random swim bait as well. Put him in there. Put some line throughs. I bought these down at Tabor or down at Yeah, Lake Fork. I don't know if I'm really gonna throw him, but it looks cool. I, I might just put one of them in there because that takes a lot of room. Take one of those, the hook. I'll take one of these, but hook. I'm not gonna bring both of those because that's a lot of stuff. Okay. For the fish that decide they want to either be like pre-spawn and harder to catch, or they're like or like they're staging up or getting ready to go push back out, which could happen in late April with the fish already spawning. DT 10 box. That 8 to 10 foot, 8 to 12 foot zone, that's going to be a big zone for sure later this month. Hmm. I'm not going to get into all of my other stuff. I'm not going to get into like big giant plugs or anything like that yet. I'm not feeling that yet. Definitely have to have the Vibe Jig box. You got plenty of them in there. Definitely going to be one I need to add to the group. Just got that here. So, a necessity. This is one, this is actually one of my biggest necessities for traveling all over the country. When competing in tournaments or just out there fun fishing, you want something like this is like all a treble hook box. I have like all my trebles, feather trebles, one off, everything in between. I have it, short shanks at all, all in one box like this. So, the cool thing with this is, is like if at any baits that I have, I got the right hook in here for, to replace that hook. And you know, like when you ever like crank a lot of rock or you need a good hook, I mean, it's, it's like trying to go through your boat and actually like pick out, like try to find that one box of hooks that you had randomly in one bag of, you know, plastic bag somewhere. That's irritating. Grabbing and putting them all in their respective deal and having a treble hook box has saved me so many times. Countless times. Have to have that. I know I just talked about saying the jig, the jig bite might be over. I'm not saying it's over, it's just a little, Sometimes they prefer a soft plastic during the spawn a little bit more than Jake, but I got to have him in there. Pre-spawners, beware. I'm not going to do that swim. A swim jig box would be good so, in other places, but we don't have a lot of shallow cover right now, so I'm not going to, not shallow, but. Okay, so last but not least, I feel like is we got top water. I do need to put one thing together. Probably a frog box. I don't know if I have need that much. I have like, this is like my frog box. And this is my popping frog box. So I got a lot to say the least. I got heavy frogs. I got matte frogs. I got, I got a lot of different frogs. So, so there's not a lot of matte vegetation. So I'm just going to go with the popping frogs. Popping frogs is it. I'm trying to think if there's really anything else. I feel like we got most of it. The only other thing that I'm gonna say is I already have some of my backup line. This is, I always bring a couple spools in the boat. So this is all the suffix advanced that I have. Um, and so I might need to grab some extra braid. 30 pound braid's a good, all, that's a 40, all right, this is 40 pound performance. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, let's get this thing set up. Oh, uh, we got a mountain full of, full of tackle. All right, so I'm probably gonna put this guy back here. What I normally do is I put the baits or the, the boxes that I'm less likely to grab for a whole lot further back. Um, if I'm trying to get more speed out of my boat, then I'm gonna put a lot of my weight, less plastics towards the back of the boat or a lot of the heavier stuff towards the back of the boat or a lot of like the terminal tackle in here, I'm not gonna have it way up in the front of the boat where I can't get the lift. So if you're trying to get more speed out of your boat, that's one thing you're gonna have to do. But, all right, so we got some 
We got the storm glides. I'm gonna put him towards the back because I have actually a couple of them already tied on, so I don't think I'm gonna have to switch up too much. I'm going to open up this box of swim baits. I don't want to pinch that tail though. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Vibrating jigs. Put him right there. Tube. Let's break his deal. Put him right there. Fluke style baits. Toads. S worms. Like a long trench hog. Bandito. Worm. Piece. Okay. Dragon drops. I pretty much got it somewhat set up for what I what I like. This is the big thing. See how like neat and clean this is right now? It's not gonna be that way here in two trips. I'm sure of it. But this is the biggest thing for me and I talked about how I switched up from not having bags. Now it's super clean. All my plastics, all my hard baits, all my stuff is in one deal. The only, I did forget one class of baits. There's like a couple more that I have to add here in a second, but I wanted to show you how I sort of at least set this up. So let me put these swim baits up. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put them at. I need something with a little bit more room in them. I don't wanna jack them up. They're like $20 swim baits. Put them in this larger shad box. Okay. So I'll probably come back to here, but I'm gonna show you real quick here. I always have line in the boat. So I have eight pound, this is eight pound leader line. This is suffix, suffix advanced fluorocarbon. This is like some 14. So I have it over here. This is some 17, 20. This is 10 pound suffix 832. So I go back and forth between the 832 and actually I throw eight pound a lot of times and eight pound nano braid. So the thing is, this is like more abrasion resistant than the Nano Braid, which is like Nano cast like crazy good, like really, really good. Like cast like off your rod, like you cast it like down the street a long way. Further than this line will. But when you're around like like really like nasty stuff like docks and like real big lay down trees and stuff like that, this is not going to break if it touches that very seldom. Very seldom it's going to. Where Nano is a little bit more, I've not broke that many off. I've only broken I think one off on the time that I've used it around something gnarly, but it's just the fact that it can. I, I can bite the Nano with my teeth. Not saying to do that, don't do that at home. But with this 10, with the 832, you don't have that issue. So it's sort of like sometimes you have to have both. All right, so we just added the braid right here and added a couple spools of advanced, Subix Advanced monofilament. This is like super low stretch stuff, but I will throw that. This is like 20 pound test. Sometimes I'll throw it on soft waters. Check, 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 check. I got a couple more things I gotta grab. Yep. All right, so I forgot my jerk bait box. So you got my deep jerk bait. Uh, and then I got like some X wraps. One more. Man, I'll tell you what's really good is a floating jerk bait this time of year. So, what I'm gonna do instead of like bringing a whole bunch of these, I think you can probably catch them all. I'm just gonna throw a couple of them like over here in the corner. You know, like the floating worms are really a big popular deal when they're spawning. You know, you've seen. Guys catch them. MDJs obviously crushed them the last little bit on that in the last couple tournaments. But one of the best substitutes for a floating worm is is smaller little like floating jerk bait. So this one right here is like the Shatter Wrap Shad. It's like a little small lipped, doesn't dive real deep, so it just gets down there. And it's a slow floater, so it doesn't like come up like super fast. Or like the OG original, the Rapala floating minnow, like that's been long, here forever. That's one of the best. So. I'm gonna throw a couple of these. This like looks like a methylate copper color. I think that'd eat him just fine. I'm gonna grab a couple more though, just in case. I think this is actually could be like a really good deal. I think everybody just throws like they're floating on them so much that then you just gotta switch them up sometimes. I don't think that'll be good enough. I don't need to bring the whole box. If they start biting really good, the good thing is I'm staying here in my house for the foreseeable future. So if I have to grab something off the wall, I can do it. Where when I leave for a tournament, I cannot. I have to call the wife up and say, yo, UPS me this box. It happens quite often, it actually does. Okay, so last, I did not want to forget accent spinner baits. Whenever you get in like dirty water, sometimes they'll bite a spinner bait, like when they're spawning, better than like anything. It's weird. It's like one of the best, like moving baits that I've still caught them on really good. Like when it's really stained, really muddy, get it like a spring rain, gotta happen in your bait. We got vibrating jigs. I know some of you are gonna be like, what about this? What about that? I know I'm just sort of like packing for the Tennessee River. Like I might be fishing a lot of the Tennessee River because it's really close here to the house. Um, you know, I don't see myself traveling too far by any means. So 
staying real close. So this is sort of me just sort of getting ready for maybe even slide down in Gunners, which is only like an hour away. So quick day trips. That's the plan for all this tackle. Um, hey, I, we're gonna see if this all works out. I'll have an update throughout the, the, the month if this is, if I have to add a few things, I'll let you all know. But I wanted to show you sort of like how I sort of organize and keep my stuff sort of where it's at um, and, and how I sort of set it up in my boat, but then also what I'm fishing with this month. I know it's a lot of stuff to be fishing with. Now, I'm probably not gonna fish with it all, but at least what I'm packing my boat with. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure to turn on your notifications if you already haven't, so that way you know, hey, when we drop a video, because we've been dropping them a little bit more frequently later, as of late then, um, so anyway, hopefully y'all are enjoying them. Let us know what you guys think. Comment below, give them a little thumbs up. We'll see y'all on the lake. <laughs>